Hi, I'm Gary Byers. Welcome to Troweling Down Biblical Archaeology for the 21st Century. I'm with our local rock star and ceramic star, ceramic, Dr. Stephen Collins. And we are in the ARC, the Archaeological Research Center uh, for the Tel El Hamam excavation project in Jordan, although the ARC is where our schools are in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And we're glad to have you here. Um, Dr. C, look at all this stuff. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. This is just a tiny bit fraction that we're trying to sort through. So we're, we're sorting this into forms, but all of, all of this is from the Middle Bronze Age. So this is the time period of the destruction of the city at, yes. at Tal al -Hamam. we say Biblical Sodom. So this is the, uh, this is the stuff from that destruction. Right. Um, a lot of destruction here. Yeah, there really is. And of course, you can see how many just pieces we find. <laughs> Hardly ever do we find enough to be able to put together like this vessel. And we have talked about this one we in have. the past. This is a small crater. And craters were usually a lot bigger, but they're really for mixing punch and wine water together. You know, we, that's what we think. But um, classy vessel. But this thing was blown apart. It was found strewn across the floor over several meters. And some of it's black, blackened. Some of the pieces are burned. Some of them are not burned. So it was variously charred uh, according to where it landed. So it was it it when it was all together it wasn't it wasn't burnt and then as it was blown apart and went uh, these pieces came from a bunch of different areas yes and the, some pieces landed in in the midst of uh, burnt material burning material and others did not well pretty pretty cool piece and um, most of these were not found together but we do have one that was and uh, again we've uh, I think we've probably talked about this in the past. But uh, we do have some pieces missing. We, we did lose a little bit. It was amazing all of this much was together. Yeah. Archaeologically, other than tombs, we almost never find a reasonably whole cooking pot. And yeah, uh, do you remember where this one came from? That's a beauty. You put it together. Um, what's the registration number say? I didn't even see the number on it. So every, every anyway, the artifact has a, a number that tells us where it came from. Yeah. We have it in our database and we can check and there get all is. the information we want. You can look up that number, 9561. 9561. But I don't remember where it came from. It comes from the uh, palace. It came from the palace area. And uh, when you, I, I remember when you started putting it together, and we start with the rims, sort of like with a puzzle, you start with the outside edges. And we started there and you just it just kept coming. And almost never do we get the base right. of, of a vessel. Don't. And clearly it was used. It, it, it had been uh, burned. Even on the inside there's a little bit. This, this, most of this burning would not have come uh, from, from the destruction. This was a cooking this vessel, was a cooking vessel. Over, over top of a fire. And to find this much together was really amazing. Yeah, you just, it just normally doesn't happen that way. Oh, um, uh, Danny, our, our Italian film producer, suggests that we just come over here and to take a look at what's here. So based on uh, what we were finding, one of our uh, grad students decided to draw everything and put it up here. So we were, we were just looking at this kind of a vessel. Ours only had one handle. Uh, most of them have two, although a lot of them have none at all. And so that was that, was that vessel. And then uh, here, this, is, this is the typical crater that Steve talked about, usually much larger. And uh, that one that was all pretty and colored, painted, uh, is a little different style. So um, we got some more here. Which one do you want to talk about next? Wow. Um, well, what's interesting is we have all these kinds of vessels out yeah. on the tables, yeah. representative, representatives of each one of these types. So, um, you know, I love jars. I love these guys. I think we've talked about casseroles a little bit before. These are a little bit different kind of cooker. They're, they're specially made, we think, for um, cooking a certain kind of dish, certain kind of casserole, certain kind of, whether it's meat or whether it's vegetable, uh, something special is cooked in this, in this vessel. Yeah, and these vessels were not made by professionals. 
like virtually all the others, they were made by just regular people, by the cooks. You Probably usually made say. by the cooks themselves. So this, I got a whole tray of them, but they're all bagged up. So, but we got we got lots of this stuff, and uh, we're trying to put them together as we can. So you want to? We, we got. Um, how about the big jar that the Duke was putting together? We show the inside and the outside because that's pretty cool over yeah. there. Yeah. Get a sense of how we reconstruct. We things. just have some pieces of this. If I can just lift it up carefully, it's sitting in the sandbox there. But this is the bottom of a, a relatively large storage jar. And this is a big one. Yeah. But we're also putting some braces on it because at this point in time, we don't have the whole thing. We just have representative pieces of this one side. And so, um, just to be safe, adding a little extra, extra protection to it. And uh, the sand really helps to keep it, uh, keep it upright until everything dries. If you're really well. reconstructing vessels, putting it in sand is just a great place. You yeah. have a, a bucket or a, a pail or whatever of sand. So how about, um, how about this one? Oh, that came out pretty nice. As you can see, they had to put some bracing on this one too. This is a, a typical late Bronze Age biconical crater. It's pretty nice. Yes, it's very, very nice. See the painted decoration here, the vertical registers with the little wavy lines in between. Yeah, so that's the kind of painting we, we call that monochrome, just one color of paint. And uh, that kind of painting was what they did in, in different periods. And this is the late Bronze Age period where they had those vertical registers as opposed to horizontal kind of registers from Middle Bronze Age pieces. Um, so so the, again, this is a crater, a little bit more like the one we saw up there on the, on the board. Um, how about this storage jar? Th yeah. This we have more storage jar types than a, than I've ever even seen published anywhere. So our our publications on this will really shed a lot of new light on uh, the the various forms. This is a small jar. You can see, it's um, I would say small jar. You use the word now. If petite. it gets if it gets too small, it becomes a jug. Yeah. But this is a small jar. You can see the rim is. Fairly petite. Uh, we don't have the handle on this one. We have a, a little bit of an attachment that will go together. A few other pieces, but uh, we don't have the whole handle. Or eight. it would have two. Yeah. Yes. Really, the jars yes. have two handles. And um, so it's a small one. I want you to compare the size of this jar opening with, say, this guy. Yeah. Big difference. Okay. This is a really, really big vessel. This is a smaller one, but you can see they come in every size and every possible size in between. So you can see this is a much bigger one. This is a completely different kind of vessel. Yeah. This vessel is what we call a globular jar. It's just a big rounded kind of globular thing with a nice neck decoration and an everting rim. Pretty classic to the Middle Bronze I period. Mm -hmm. This is a Middle Bronze II period, which is the time of Abraham. But we have lots of them. As we said, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Just um, amazing things. Oh, by the way, take a look at the inside of, of this. So you can see this is part of the process that we go through to, uh, to put them together. So we find pieces that go together. We'll draw some lines. Uh, so that you can tell and even number them, label them in some fashion. This is all part of the process. And the good news is we have on this piece, we have the rim and we've got the other pieces over there all the way down to the base. So we'll be able to show on one side of this vessel what the whole thing looked like, rim to base, big deal for us. Um, but the other side will be pretty blank, so we'll um, we'll display it in an unusual way, just like we will that other one that had all the braces on the inside. Big big storage jar. We've got rim to base. That one only had base up to not even to the shoulder yet. So that was going to be a pretty big jar. Okay, what do you want to what do you want to show next? Well, jars to jugs. Jugs. There we go. Now, what is a jug? It's a small jar, but generally with uh, just one handle. 
and typically up near the, the rim because you're going to pour out of a jug like a, a pitcher, a jug, a pitcher kind of thing. Now we just have bits uh, and pieces of jugs here because that's mostly what we deal with are just the individual sherds. Yeah, we call yeah. these diagnostics because the rims and the handles and the bases often tell us um, exactly what period it belongs to by the form. Yeah, we, uh, we, don't, we, don't, need, we don't need to do all of this we we can we can just go with a with a piece of oh, a yeah. rim because we don't have the rim here and we really would like to find that. Oh, we have it somewhere, uh, I'm sure. This is this is really this is our palace wear. Yes, it is. And this we is, call this multi-slipped cross wiping. You can see how they just sort of slop this on in a kind of an artistic way. And multi-slip means mini slips. And that a slip a, is a slip is soupy clay. Soupy. It's, you take you take clay, put enough water in it to make it kind of the consistency of paint, and you dip a rag, or your fingers, or something in it, and you just do this to it. You just slop it on. Wait till that dries, and maybe you make a, another color of slip, and you put it on. So we have multiple slips here. And generally, when you're making a slip on top of whatever the vessel is, it's a different color than the clay of the regular vessel. Yes. You want to add color, but in this case, it's multi-slip, and then, as you said, it's just cross-wiped. It's not, um, it's not done clearly. It just wiped all over the place. Right, and you can see that this one has a, has a double rope handle. Can you see, um, I know, Danny, can we see the edge of, of, a, of a double rope on the inside? It's just really hard to see there, but it's two pieces. Real characteristic of Middle Bronze Age vessels. Um, in fact, we'll probably pull up a double rope handle here. You can see more of one. Can you get that? I don't know if that's a very good shot or not. Can't really see it. Oh, you can see it on the outside here, too. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's even better. My bad. Um, can, you, can you pull up a double rope handle I'm looking for a double rope right here. Okay. Here's one. So you get a more of a better sense now. Yeah, here's a double rope handle. Now you can see right here, you can see the two ropes that were put together to make the handle. There's two of them. And you can see they often keep that split. And then this one actually has an extra little piece of clay. Here's the rim. An extra little piece of clay added to little, it. Kind of a little button or something. A little button. Now, the, the double ropes, they just made two kind of, kind of snakes, little snakes of clay. Mm -hmm. Put them on. Uh, probably put them together first and then here's put one. them on. Yeah, there's a nice here's one. a real nice one. So you can see the two ropes put together to make a handle. Now, sometimes in the middle of bronze age, you'll see three. Yeah or four mm -hmm. or five put together like this. Special feature that they, uh, that they did, um, they started using a fast pottery wheel around 2100 BC. And that was the beginning of the Middle Bronze Age. And so the Bronze Age people really did um, like to show off because this was all new technology yes, and they was. just loved to use that stuff. So you want to talk about this one? Now here's, here's a tag because it connected real well through the hole there yeah. to hold on to it. So we remember where it is, although Where's we've got our from? number. It's, so from we, the, we can... it's from the palace area. <coughs> so okay. now, this is a carinated bowl. And that means we carinated. Call it, we call it carinated because you see this turn in the vessel wall, little sharp turn. That's called a carination. Only done with a fast pottery wheel. Yes. So that was all part of that new technology that the Middle Bronze Age people loved to do and to display just how much talent and skill they and had. And this one's interesting. It's kind of, this is kind of a combination of things because we have, we have the, the nice wheeling technique creating yeah. the carination, yeah. but instead of the yeah. fancy, fancier base, yeah. it just simply has a very simple flat base, yeah. which, by the way, is pulled off. They pulled it off the potter's wheel with a string. Can, can you see so we call that line? a string cut base. So, do we have another one? I was uh, I was looking for a, a real, one of the th real thin pieces of pottery to show some of the kind of bowl work uh, that they could do. <laughs> I had it over editing, here a minute ago. Editing. Here's here's a little one. So just just a, a sense how small yeah. this is. And uh, they, they just love doing this kind of thing on a, on a fast wheel to, to show off, but to show what um, um, they, they were excited and proud about what they had. And That's sometimes, really now sometimes bowls get raised up with, with a foot, we call footed bowls. 
So now we don't have the whole foot here, but you can see how here's the bowl. So you can get a nice look at what it looks yep. like, but it's been raised up on a pedestal. So we call it a footed bowl or a pedestal bowl. And um, this is one of our palace wear vessels. It's cross wiped, it's multi slipped, many different colors of slip put together. And um, this is a nice example of a, yep. of a footed bowl. Now, you, uh, you may or may not be excited about this. But, but archaeologists get so excited when we can find the rims and bases of vessels to get a sense of what it's all and about. And this was Abraham's world. Yeah. yeah. I mean, a Abraham was a rich guy, and mm -hmm. he hobnobbed around with, with city-state kings. Yeah. And one of the kings that he hobnobbed around with from time to time was the king of Sodom. Yeah. And so uh, I don't know if the king of Sodom ever invited Abraham over for lunch, but if he had... This is the kind of thing, presentation, you can imagine a, a bowl like this with a bunch of grapes hanging over and, you know, a couple of pomegranates and pretty cool yeah, deal. some dates, you pretty know, cool so deal. there, so this is the kind of thing you would get in the palace. So this is archaeology. Uh, we live with pottery. We, we have to have rims and bases and handles to tell us what the vessels were. And when we do that, we can understand the world of the Bible and that's what we love to do. Thanks for joining us today for Troweling Down. Look forward to seeing you again soon.